You got one. <laughs> How they fight on that tackle? Any good? <laughs> it's a little funny. I don't want it. <laughs> now you got a 12 pound leader just above the jig head. Uh huh. So you can grab the leader and, and flip like, the fish in without breaking it. Like. Flounder fishing, Belmar, New Jersey, Shark River. I'm Bob Murray, Delaware Valley Outdoors. Stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. All right. First cast, there first you fish. Go. Yeah. You got a bite, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> a little oh, too light on the drag there. Yeah. Oh. There he is. Let me know if we need the net. I think so. That was a nice fish. Yeah. And that's the thing, I mean, that's a nice fish any other time, but with the limit up the way it is, it's just a, a good release fish, and that's right. what, what this fish... Oh. oh, good. I released it. Yeah. That <laughs> was good. That's what this fishery's becoming. It's a catch and release deal, you know? Hey, But it's Steve, a ton of fun. Steve Horvath is with me today. We're down at Belmar, New Jersey in the Shark River. Yep. And we're fluking. We're fluking. And Steve, we're, usually I don't, you know, when you ask me to come down, he said, bring a trout rod. I'm there. A trout rod for fluke? Oh yeah. <laughs> What's the story with that? Oh, it's just fun. Uh-huh. What happens is, is it becomes a deal where Finesse catches you more fish. You know, instead of the big, heavy, clunky tackle we always use, mm -hmm. it's mostly release fishing. Right. Switch over to lighter tackle, and what we found is we're catching a lot more fish. You know, where we caught, you know, a dozen, two dozen fish in a day, now we're catching 30, 40, 50. You know, and, and as you can see, the action's pretty quick. I mean, <laughs> yeah, and on these light rods, it's a lot of fun. Yep. It's a lot of fun. I think fun. we're going to make another drift here. Okay. And that's the thing we're gonna we're just waiting for the, the tide to push us through all this and then just make another drift along these areas exactly and this is something anybody can do you know virtually anybody can come down here rent a boat for the day some light tackle you know they'll set you up at the tackle shop and you can just go out and have a ball take the kids out it's safe right right you're not you're not out on the ocean it's yeah. cheap yeah and it, yeah relatively inexpensive to yep. when, you, when you when you look at it Exactly. And every now and then we do catch a big one. Yeah. And then that's when we can catch that and then we can fillet it and then we have some, some, some flounder. Yeah, some stuffed flounder. We're down here and I say that it's the Shark River. Tell us exactly uh, where we are and what do we have here. Well, we're down here in Belmore, New Jersey on the Shark River, like you said. The, the misnomer is, you know, I mean, it is Shark River. There, right. there is a little bit of a river here, right. but most of it's a back bay. It's nice protected water. It's shallow. You know, people from coming from Pennsylvania like us, right down 195 to the end. You hit to where you have to make a left or right, you make a left, and you're there. And you're there. You know? And you know what? We have pretty good wind today, but it's not so bad. No. No, it's not. You know? And now, the, now explain the Shark River going out into the ocean. Now, what, what, what do we have there? Yeah. The inlet. Well, what we have is... Uh, Shark River Inlet, which is only, I mean, we're not even a mile inland here. We're probably three quarters of a mile inland from the ocean. You know, the fish don't have real far to migrate to get in here. And uh, at different times of the year, there's everything in here. Corgis, spots. I mean, most of the time of the year, there's something to fish for. So it's almost like fishing in the ocean, except you're, you're, you get this protected uh, exactly. cover. Exactly. You know, there. Now, this is a secret. Yeah, okay. Okay. But uh, there are times when we catch bass up to 20, 30 pounds back here at night. Striped bass. Yes. You know, they come in here, they're feeding on the bunker and stuff. And it can be good. It's, it's real hit and miss, to be honest with you. But when you're here and it's on, I mean, we're sitting here talking to the guy at the tackle shop. We're talking to Bob Matthews, who lies less than most fishermen. <laughs> but... Uh, 
I mean, he had a, a little girl yesterday catch a 49-pound striper out here, you know, off the beach. You know, we're on a secret spot here. Yeah, I see you. <laughs> Hello, America. <laughs> the spot we're fishing over here is, is called the tennis courts. Okay. Obviously, obviously we have tennis courts. courts. Right there. The deal is you normally start your drift or end your drift, depending on which way the tide's going, right by the outfall pipe. And what happens is you'll, you'll drift either back out toward the inlet or an incoming tide, you'll drift back this way. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times what you do is you stay 75, maybe 100 feet off. There's like a little little deep area, almost like a channel that uh -huh. comes back here. Uh -huh. And what will happen is you'll be able to tell where the fish are and mark where the fish are, not with a buoy, but by which park bench the fish are near. <laughs> okay, so you just look over there and say, okay. This exactly. Is and then just, just hang it out. Watch. Yep. But the tennis courts is a spot that is generally good at higher water. Mm -hmm. You know, a little little high water, maybe halfway out, halfway in or more. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just a good spot. We catch a lot of fish back here. Now and then a real big one, so. That's what we want. And again, we're not very far right from the, from where no, we launched. we're within a half mile from, yeah. The, yeah. from the marina. So if we uh, run out of bait, we can run right back in there. Yeah. Hey! <laughs> Boy, he nailed that one. You know you are absolutely killing him. <laughs> on that little special rig we're using with that chartreuse twister on there. And don't think for a minute that I'm not about to put one on. <laughs> I gotta tell you, this is a lot of fun. I yeah. enjoy this. Oh, man. Look at that rod bend. Oh, come here. That's it. Now these fish here obviously are not keeper fish. We have right. to go to what, 18 inches 18 now? 18 inches for a keeper fish. Right. So we'll, we'll probably go through an awful lot of fish to get the, the keepers. Well, that's the good news. Right. We should catch dozens of them, Bob. Right. That's All the, day. That's the most, the fun part is actually the catching of the fish here. Yeah, uh, yeah if we get the 18 inchers, that's fine. Yep. But uh, to catch these fish like this, I mean, that was a good little hit there. Yep. And again, I'll turn around and I'll say, okay, we're at the second park bench. Okay. <laughs> so we'll drift by the second park bench. And that's a, that's a big secret to it. You know, mark the spot, go back to the spot, because these aren't solitary fish. Once you've found one, you've generally found a bunch of them. And they're slippery. Look at the color on that fish. Now, if you look at that, the, the fish here, I mean, they really mimic the bottom. Yes. If you're on a sand bottom, they'll be lighter and have more spots. On a mud bottom, they'll tend to be darker. That just models the bottom. Yep, exactly. Models the bottom. Very well disguised fish. Yeah. Divers tell me that they have a hard time seeing them. Really? Yep. All right. <laughs> he walloped that one. Oh, yeah. So you'll notice, Bob, what I did was you caught the fish, we drifted another 25 feet, didn't catch a fish, mm -hmm. and we're coming right back to the exact same spot. So we just mark it on the the benches there were exactly. give us some sort of a stationary yep. spot. And what you could do is you could triangulate it. We're off of this bench, straight off of a water tower or a big tree. So you have two different reference points to come back to it. Because you don't want to throw out a buoy marker because that lets all the other fishermen know where they're at. <laughs> and like you said, once you find uh, one or two, you know that there's going to be a bunch in that yeah. area and, and yep. just keep just keep working that area. Yep, the flounder or winter, fl uh, summer flounder. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're a school fish. I think you got grass there. Yeah, that's I got. And what happens is, as soon as you get grass on there, you have to reel it up and get the grass off because, well, flounder don't like salad. No. They're meat eaters. No. Yeah, that's true. You don't want to keep that on there. Right. But now we know that there's fish between the outfall pipe and the first bench. Yeah. And we'll do that drift a couple times, and you'll catch the ones that are cooperative. Mm -hmm. Then you'll run out of fish. Move a little bit more, find more fish. <laughs> hey! Hey! <laughs> Did you get a little bend in that rod there, my friend? <laughs> uh, we got the bendo going on here. <laughs> Ordinarily, if your rod bends like this, you would think you got a whale. Right. <laughs> now, this is the first one that we've caught on the top hook. A little better fish. Yeah. 